I've been doing this shit for a long time and people what the, like I feel like I'm I'm like and what I mean by that is like a lot of people watch it but nobody really wants to tell people analogy? they watch it and 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 so a lot of people like watch me and copy me but they don't want to That's tell people analogy. that they watch me and copy me in but case like you didn't know Sean he's right. like yeah. Potato, potato, uh, Ryan Stewart. Uh, that's a great analogy. Yeah. I mean. But it is. It's like a dirty little secret that people got, you know? <laughs> and, and Why do you think you're a dirty little secret? Because. So I always thought we'd take you down a trip of memory lane, standing on business, and go from influencer to industry leader, <clears throat> and how you've pioneered a lot of this. A lot of the stuff that's going on, because most people won't believe the shit that comes out of your mouth if you were to tell them what you've done. And so I was taking a step back, and I was talking to you the other day, and I was getting with Amy about what you guys have accomplished over the 10 years together? Mm -hmm. 15 mm -hmm. years in the game? Ten, 10 years together, uh, 15 years doing this shit. You know, my first big breakthrough, <laughs> Sean, was in 2013. I, uh, I'm, I reached out to a guy named Josh Flagg. And Josh Flagg is on Million Dollar Listing Los Angeles. They were just through season one. And I actually reached out the first time to a guy named Madison Hildebrand, who's no longer on the show, but he was a star on the show at the time. And I had this idea. I saw this vision long before anybody else. I mean, we're talking 2013, long before anybody else. And I had this vision that industry leaders needed to take their information and share it with the industry, right? And so. Uh, I reached out to Josh Flagg. He sells hundreds of millions of dollars worth of real estate, like part-time kind of slacker kind of guy, and uh, comes from a very wealthy family and was on this TV show. And so I just reached out to him on social media and I was like, hey, you know, do you uh, be interested in, in making some money together? And I said, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to run an eight-week course where you teach people how you sell high-end luxury real estate in Los Angeles, and we'll charge $1,000 for it. And maybe we can get a few hundred people to do it. And, you know, literally we're talking eight hours of your time. I'll script it all out for you. I'll write everything for you. All you got to do is show up and read a script, which I know you can do because you're in Hollywood. And we'll see if we can make some money. And we end up making, I don't know, 50 or or $100,000 from that it was my first time. And uh, we didn't run any ads. We just kind of promoted on social media. Josh had about 8,000, maybe 10,000 fans on social media at the time. He's probably got millions now. And and it worked. You know, it was a little bit of a, a tricky situation because uh, I, some things I'd rather not see on camera took place. But it was <laughs> it was pretty wild, right? Yeah. I mean, it was if I played the recording. You've said the, it on camera, though, before. So if you want to go down the Google rabbit hole, I bet you. Uh, yeah, I probably it. have said it on camera before. <laughs> um, and. You know, uh, with with Josh, we 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 he showed up the first time. I'll just say this: he showed up the first time, and he goes, "Wait, are we live? Do you just want me to read that script that you wrote for me on this?" <laughs> line? Like people paid, and they were there, and I like hung up the phone. I panicked, right? So then, uh, that went pretty successful. So I reached out to a guy named Frederick Eklund. Frederick probably had same thing ten fifteen thousand followers on social media at the time. This is before he's on Bravo. This no, he they were on season one. So I took over on season two. Okay, and okay, so we'll step back. Season two, he's on Bravo. On Bravo, which at the time was the lowest watched TV show on the lowest watched channel. Bravo wasn't what it is today. Yeah. There was no Rich Housewives of Beverly yeah. Hills. There yeah. was none of that. Bravo was a a, a gay channel that like most people didn't watch it it was it was yeah. a channel it was geared towards was that a, community yeah yeah still is <laughs> and so um and but that community is a lot larger then. now than it was then in all reality and so um i reached out to frederick and i said hey here's the numbers we did from josh flag and i kind of pitted him against josh i was like you know you you got a bigger personality sure you can beat josh's numbers he's like i'm in you know <laughs> and so I used this company called Webinar Jam, which was Andy Jenkins' company. Andy's a fucking legend. I miss that guy. And uh, and I I didn't know exactly how to work the technology. It was the first time to try it. You should always test things before you you use them live in front of hundreds of people that paid thousands of dollars. Good I'm just know. saying. And dude, <laughs> I kid you not. 
there were guys sharing. I didn't know this at the time, but there were guys sharing Frederick Eklund's porn. He, apparently, he won an AVN at some point in his life for best solo scene. I'm not sure what that's about, right? But, oh my but gosh. there were people, and I had to shut down the webinar, and I like panicked. And Frederick's like, "What happened?" And I was like, "Uh, <laughs> no, I'll handle it, right?" And so, anyway, we we ran the <clears throat> webinar back again. And we end up selling like five, six hundred spots at a thousand dollars a piece to Frederick's deal, right? And what we would do is he and Frederick actually wrote his own scripts, trained his own people, super talented, awesome guy. And then we decided, hey, let's go to let's go to New York and take a tour of these penthouses that Frederick sells. And so we did that. And we charged another like two or five grand to do that, and it worked well. We went back and did the same thing as a tour in Beverly Hills with Josh Flagg, but he had just gotten on TV for stealing art from somebody's house, so nobody let us in the house. It was the weirdest thing ever. But I did all of that before, you know, these guys were industry leaders that are now maybe influencers and TV channel guys or whatever, but at the time, they were guys that sold hundreds of millions of dollars worth of real estate. I I, I had this, this is my zone of genius. I, I didn't sell to real estate agents. I sold to loan officers. Okay. I, I didn't know. I'd never been a real estate agent. I knew how to sell real estate because it sold a shitload of it just as an investor. But my thought process was, and this is, this is how I think y'all I'm dealing with loan officers. Loan officers want realtors. So if I can go get with the top realtors and build a real estate following, then the loan officers who come work with me, they'll want to be with me because I got all the realtors. Right. This real fucking smart. Thank you. And <laughs> and it worked. And I blew up in the loan officer realm because of that. Cause I could say, Sean, well, you know, if you come in, you build your machine and you do things the right way, I can introduce you to the top real estate agent in your market. I already know them. They follow me because of my Frederick Eklund connections. Meanwhile, the loan officers are like, dude, how did this guy who doesn't even do mortgages anymore, who's been to prison, whose life's fucking crazy as shit, <clears throat> how does this guy? get the top how does he go recruit the top real estate agents on the planet that are on tv it was very simple i knew the math hey hey i think i'm a nobody and i'm making 20 grand a month at this time 2013 i'm making 20 grand a month selling this shit part-time you sir you're a celebrity you're on tv me and you we can make hundreds of thousands of dollars doing this and they're like yeah 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 we can absolutely we can and we did and so we ran that two seasons with Frederick, two seasons with Josh Flagg, blew up their TV show. I'm not taking 100% credit for this because the guys are talented, but nobody was running ads on Facebook in 2013. And well, very few people were running ads on Facebook and no, nobody. I started the whole advertise to get coaching clients business as well. That's a whole separate story, but people weren't doing that shit either in 2013. Right. And so I'm running the, they definitely weren't doing it in 2012 when I was with Kevin nations. And so I'm running these ads. And meanwhile, now all of a sudden thousands of real estate agents are showing up on our webinars. They're buying Frederick's program. And guess what they're also doing? Going and watching Bravo. Their show goes from last place on Bravo season one to first place on Bravo in season two. And I guarantee you the NBC executives are going, bro, we fucking crushed that billboard campaign. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm over here just paying about $50 a day, getting a shitload of leads. We're calling every one of them. Me and a guy named Sean Mathis are calling every one of them. We're locking people in, getting them set up fucking. And, and it was this big catapult for my career. And then from there, I was able to start running more money towards, I took that money, put more money into my own ads. Hey, if you're a loan officer doing less than 2 million a month, I can help you get to that, blah, blah, blah. And really the shit took off from there. So step one, I was the OG in celebrity partnerships online to build coaching programs. Okay. I got the fucking receipts, motherfucker. And I'm saying that it was 2013, but it might've even been earlier than that. Cause it was pre knowing this lady, right? She didn't know me at this time in my life. And so it might've <laughs> even been earlier than that. Prenup. <laughs> I've also got the receipts that I was one of, if not the first person to run ads online to get coaching clients. You know, I've been doing this shit for a long time and people what the, like, I feel like I'm, I'm like porn. And what I mean by that is like a lot of people watch it, but nobody really wants to tell people analogy? they watch it, you know? <laughs> and, and, and so a lot of people like watch me and copy me, but they don't want to tell people analogy. that they watch me and copy me because I'm like this little kept Sean. secret, like you know? Yeah. Potato, potato. Uh, Ryan's doing uh, porn. That's a great analogy. Yeah. I mean. But it is. It's like a dirty little secret that people got, you know? And, and why do you think you've you're been a dirty modeled all over the industry? Why? I don't know because, you know, I, I've seen in the last week, I've seen two guys <laughs> that are very famous that both of them were like, 
Yeah, man, you know, I came up with this idea where I'll sell seats on my jet to have a mastermind. Oh, you came up with that idea, motherfucker? You? You? The same person I had a conversation with three years ago? The same person that called me and asked how I did it? You came up with that idea? Fucking bravo, asshole. Why the fuck you don't give me the credit for it? I'll never understand. Never understand. Yeah. I've been doing that shit. I'm the OG with that shit, too. I've been doing that with receipts since 2017. I did the first private jet mastermind that I ever did in 2017. I'd never seen nobody else do it. I never fucking heard. It was my idea. And it all happened out of necessity, yeah. okay? I needed to go to the Berkshire Hathaway shareholders meeting because I was a proud shareholder. And I was like, man, I want to check this off my bucket list, right? And so I went to go get a airplane ticket and there were none to go to Omaha. And I'm like, well, you know, shit, what do I do? Uh, how much is it to charter an airplane? I don't know. And I call and they're like, dude, this is crazy. They're like, Twelve thousand dollars. Twelve what? Right? Like, I fucking. How the fuck am I gonna spend twelve grand on a flight? That's fucking crazy. All right, I'll figure it out. Sign me up. So I went to Facebook and I said, "Hey, I'm having a competition. Anybody that wants to fly on a private jet to go to the Berkshire Hathaway shareholders meeting, um, anybody who joins Apex is gonna be. It was Break Free Academy at the time. Anybody who joins Break Free Academy is gonna be put in a pool, and I'm gonna draw five names from that pool to go to the Berkshire Hathaway meeting with me. I have enough shares to get all of us in. The meeting's free. You pay for your own hotel. I'll pay for the trip, and you get a year in Break Free Academy. So all these people: Thomas Jacobs, Billy Alt, Jeff Ducharme, mm -hmm. Jay Kinder. All these people joined uh, Break Free Academy. And then I drew their names out of the thing. And I was like, hey, congratulations. We're going to fucking Omaha. So we all got in the plane and we were in a King Air, right? Which I would not fly in one of those motherfuckers to save my life these days. But back then I didn't know. So we get in a King Air and we go to Omaha. And dude, I thought I was like Big Dick Thompson, bro. I thought I had it off. And then you land in Omaha next to these motherfuckers that have like 24 karat Gulfstream 9000s or some shit, bro. Like Sheiks and Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. And we're like, it's like pulling up in a Honda Accord and parking next to 20 Lamborghinis, bro. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> like I thought my Honda Accord was the shit at the time, too. You had right? the luxury edition yeah. Honda Accord. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. So, that was well played. That's that picture with your green Lambo in the jet? Yes. Yeah. Uh, McLaren. Green what year McLaren. was that? 15? 17. 17. Yeah. It's oh, a hell of a first, so, man. So now I see people now online and they're like, yeah, we got the private jet master. I'm like, at least give your boy a shot out. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least be like, yo, Stuman gave me this idea. Nobody ever does that. I read books from people I know, and they, like, literally have my shit word for word in it. And I was like, I taught this person that. Least they could do is say, hey, my boy Stuman put me down with this. But nobody ever does. Nobody ever does. They're like, they're like, you know what? I just had this amazing idea, and uh, you, you guys are going to fucking love this. I'm like, it wasn't your idea. Like, Plagiarism. I, like, I believe mm -hmm. that God talks to me through this, like, radio intent. I believe he talks to all of us, but through this radio antenna. So I get an idea and I go act on it, right? But then I think a lot of the industry treats me like a fucking lab rat, like, oh, he did the test and it didn't it's kill him, you, so let's go try it. Everybody does that though. Nobody, everybody wants to take that idea and, you know, get the credit for it. But at the end of the day, we like, we know I got words. receipts. Who invented yeah. words? me, motherfuckers. All I got receipts. Of words. Yeah, a lot we got of people something have, cool working you know, for you. Similar thoughts, and so they think, ah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna say that, and it's, you know, it's nobody's gonna ask questions. Remember in school when you'd get like get in trouble and like count it off when you didn't cite your source and stuff. Yep. I feel yeah. like that was all a lie. Like now in the real world, like you can do it all day long, and it's nobody counts against you. It's fine. It's mm. totally fine. It, and you know what? And I'm, I'm <laughs> glad that people get to, to do these things and. You know, that people have copied me and everything. I'm, I'm really glad for all that. I just wish that, like, on the way up, they would have helped me up, too. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I, I didn't charge these pe two famous people that were doing the Jet Mastermind. I didn't charge them for that information. Yep. I just feel like they could, now that they, like, they're a little more popular than me and doing it, I feel like they could be like, you know, my boy Stuman mm -hmm. really put me down mm -hmm. with this. Bless them Ma with that Maybe make a YouTube video talking about how I helped you or some shit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like... Like, I just named Sean Mathis, Kevin Nations, Frederick Eklund, Josh Flagg. I named the people that I work with because mm -hmm. I, and I'm not getting clout from any of those dudes. I'm just saying that, you know, those are the people that help me and that I partner with. Like, I, I shout out Kevin Nations all the time. That dude changed my life. Frank Kern changed my life. Yeah. And I quote them all that when I use their shit, I quote them. We run every event that we run based on Kevin Nations model. At the end and, of the day, that person, though, that took your idea and took the credit for it, you're not the only person they've done that to. Oh, no, you that's gotta know that. And there's no longevity in that type of business plan. There's no longevity in that behavior. Like you're that's going to they're going to crash and burn because of that at some point. Well, I have been doing this for 20 years now almost. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I have seen a lot of people come and go, and I'm still here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I see a lot of people come, and they get millions of views on YouTube and millions of followers on Instagram, and then a few years later, they're like back to their job as a fucking 7-Eleven clerk or whatever the <laughs> fuck these weirdos do. And, you know, me, I get 100 views on YouTube. I got a couple followers on Instagram, but yet I I'm seem sorry. to have the longevity that most people don't have. Dude, there are so many people. You know, like there's so many people that over the years have have come up and they were the top guy. Yeah. And I feel like DJ drama, man. I'm just waiting on my moment. You know, one day (laughs) I'll be that guy. I don't know when the fuck it's going to happen, I guess, in due time. But I'm all I'm often inspired by that Cat Williams interview. And I, I talk about that all the time. But. You know, he's one of those guys that nobody helps, but he's got all more Netflix specials Everything. than anybody. But mm-hmm. you probably wouldn't know that. Mm-hmm. You know, he does his own tours. No sponsors. Nobody's lifting him up. You know, they're not really putting him in movies and wouldn't shit like that. Would you rather it be that way, though? Hold you up. don't own anybody I would. anything? I and would. at the end of the day, like, your moment, it's really relative, right? It's what you, like, your definition That's of true. that can change over time. I'm grateful think, for everything. I think if you'd have looked at where you are now from your vantage point of six years ago, I'm uh, pretty sure you'd be pretty damn proud of yourself. Yeah. And, you know... One time I was with this guy, Chase Hero, in L.A., and Chase is stupidly rich, and but he's not famous, and everybody around him was famous. We're talking celebrities and stuff. They all wanted to be Chase, and then Chase wanted to be them, meaning Chase <laughs> wanted popularity, and they all wanted to be rich, right, because mm-hmm. they were real popular but not rich, and Chase was real rich but not popular, right? Mm-hmm. And Chase has a pretty good following now, but back then he didn't, and... uh I, I remember thinking like, oh shit, everybody in LA wants to be rich and famous, but it's hard to be both, you know? And I managed to get rich. I'm not famous, you know? I managed to get pretty- What pretty... are we talking about? I can't go to the gym with an Apex shirt on and not be bothered. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel that way though. And, and you know what? Again, going back to the porn reference, that. I feel like, you know, everybody, they do know me. We can't go anywhere. I'm, I'm in mm-hmm. Aspen or where are we? Breckenridge the other mm-hmm. day. Uh, sledding down the tubing because I don't ski. I was too. I got to save my ACLs, bro. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like tubing down the the thing with my. I'm, this is save the kind the of manly ACLs. man I am. I'm carrying my daughter on a tube, right? I've got a leash on this tube, and I'm just carrying her around on it to the conveyor belt. And this dude walks up to me, and he's like, "Stupid, holy shit, it, it's you. You're here." It's like, "Yeah, man." He's like, "Can I get a picture?" I'm like, "Yeah, fuck yeah," you know. So it 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 is, I guess, a level of of fame because I don't. There's, it's rare that we don't go places people don't know us. One time, Amy and I were about to rent a boat in Mexico, and a dude was in line in front of me, and he goes, I'll go with you. I'll pay for your boat. I know who the fuck you are, dude. I'll pay for the whole last boat if you want to like, hang out for the day. It was like a $20,000 yeah, It was a big boat. bill, oh, too. Nice, dude. I love it. It's crazy. We're like, yeah. I'm not going to make you do that. Yeah, you so. said something the other day um, in regards to pre- pre- preparing for what's to come. You've had a long line of firsts, mm-hmm. right? Your first irritate. Is that correct? I was the number one in RT. Number one in RT. First with, uh, what's his name, a Wake Up Warrior? I was the second. No, I was the first uh, Wake Up Warrior thing, yeah. So you've done a lot of, I mean, I have a list of them now that I've been working for you. I've I was the first graduate. Russell Brunson's hundred in, uh, yeah, Dream right? 100 Insider. So I got to learn yeah. a little bit more about you over the last three months of the inside of what your work is and your body of work has been about. And then the first at uh, uh, MDM 2024, without having influencers, you're going to go with the industry leaders. I don't think God would, 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 was ready to reward you for what's to come right now because that that business model wasn't sustainable on what you were doing. As far as with the people mm-hmm. you were around and the people inside of Apex that we've gotten rid of, I think now it's, you're going to shine because you had a certain somebody reaching out to you the other day, right? Out of nowhere. Yeah. I don't know if I actually mentioned his name. I won't. I'll let you if you want to. And then another certain somebody, all of a sudden, these guys are coming back mm-hmm. into your lives, right? And you're doing these things without industry, uh, with industry leaders and not influencers. I think your rewards to come because you said God told you that everything you're looking for is on the other side of smoking weed. It's only been three months, buddy. And now, and now yeah, four, we have the yeah. t- the company uh, cohesive. We have a couple things to fix, but right now we're impenetrable from the back end, and all of our softwares and services aren't aren't duct taped and bolted on together. It's it's a, it's a unified front right now on that. So I think your rewards to come. You just had to do hard, hard life because one, you're stubborn. You didn't like asking for help. You hate leaning on people. You know, you, you, you've always done it alone. And now all of a sudden this is evolving to where you're doing an industry first, industry leaders only, not influencers. That'll be amazing. And then watch what happens six months to a year from now because Amy's on board with the CEO, right? She's here full time, has your back, has your money. 
you know, uh, uh, all locked in. You got me, and we got a beautiful team. I think your rewards to come. Absolutely. You know, and here's where I'll be different than the rest of those bastards. I'll bring just like at this event, I'm bringing my people up. Yeah, you know, those guys didn't bring me up. They were like, "Shh, don't tell anybody about Stuman. He might outshine us or whatever the fuck their insecurity don't is." Don't be negative me, against people I want to bring other people up. I want to bring people up. You know, like like if I became super famous, I want to make other people super famous so mm -hmm. they can enjoy that experience too. I want to help other people. Like so many people, they have this like greedy mindset. I one time talked to this super famous guy who's famous now. He wasn't famous then. And he hit me up and he's like, yo, can you help me with taxes? And I was like, yeah, I can help you with tax. I fucking hate those people. Not the IRS, the fucking accountants, <laughs> right? But but I can help you. And as he goes, I, need, I said, if I could save you the $10 million, would you buy me a Lamborghini? No, nah, I'm not going to buy you no Lamborghini for that. Well, then go help your fucking self. Yeah. you telling yeah. me if I couldn't help you save $10 million in taxes, you wouldn't buy me a $200,000 uh -huh. car? Go fuck yourself. Yeah. You know, but that's how most people think. They're like, oh, what's in it for me? Not how can I help everybody else? And that's my curse is I'm always trying to help everybody else. You know, I ended up helping the fucking guy anyway. Fuck him. You know what I mean? But <laughs> so mad. No Lambo. Sweet Jesus. Where's your Xanax? I'm kidding. No. Well, I mean, you know, I, uh, you're don't, but you have this, like, I have gone through some shit. I do. I like, do. get over it. Like, just bless oh, it. Oh, I'm over Let it. I just think it's hilarious. You, you <laughs> yeah. are going to be like... forever disappointed if you're wanting everybody to be a shining example of a giver and a kind <sighs> heart. People are going to be greedy. People are going to be less than thinkers. That's fine. You don't have to be hurt by that. You don't have to be affected by that. Okay, I'm not hurt. I just want to fight. Do that. Don't let it affect your peace of mind and your well-being because that affects your fucking trajectory. Yeah. Uh, hey, well, hold on real quick. Kings fund the wars. Yeah. yeah. The prophets fight them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just remember, you got to fund this thing, not fight it. Yeah. Um, you know? He's it's, scrappy. It's just yeah, a, yeah, it's nonstop. It's a frustration. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is. I because... finally got the moods down, too. I know when to talk to them and when not to. Yeah. That's, that's an art form, man. Congratulations. <laughs> an art, yeah, it is. Congratulations. Quick. And it's not that I'm necessarily <laughs> angry. I just have a really terrible voice. But, you know, I. It's not uh, terrible. It's. His, his it's, character. it's rough, yeah. His character, and, but <laughs> I, uh, it, I, I want to change the world. I want people to be givers. You already I are. want people to be generous. I believe we're most like God. God gave us everything. We're most like God when we're generous. And I don't. I want people to get that. And you know, there's two ways to 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 get people to buy into something. You can manipulate them, or you can bully them. And I'm not good at manipulation. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and I feel like. You know, man, everything that these guys want on the, and by the way, that guy didn't end up saving $10 million, you mm -hmm. know, and probably because God's not going to reward that guy with a $10 million savings because right. there was a test of generosity. And it wasn't that I needed a Lambo at six at the fucking time. I didn't need another one. Yeah. I, I probably wouldn't have even taken one from the guy. It was just the fact of, it, it, let me see where your heart's at, exactly. right? And then I'm disappointed. Right. I'm like, oh, you're a piece of shit. Fuck. And at the end of the you day, know? you're really a lot. If, if you're giving all this information to somebody, it's, it's not something, especially with, with taxes and stuff, that's that's really a relational thing. And if you're blessing them that information, you want to kind of make sure you're aligned with that person. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, that's aligning yourself with them. You're going to have, like, they can't take on that many clients, the people at that level. You know yeah. what I mean? Thank like, you. do we want to be in alignment? Then one time mm -hmm. I run into this dude three years later. He's like super famous. He acts like he don't know me. Like, bitch, you literally called my phone <laughs> and asked me for help multiple fucking times over the year. And you're going to act like, who are you again? Bitch, you know who the fuck I am? The motherfucking hardcore closer, asshole. <laughs> you know? It's Should I show you the text messages where you fucking got my personal phone number? He you knows fuck? you. He didn't know he was mad at you. He Man, didn't want to say hi. He's fucking... Should be mad. You didn't help him with Do you think taxes. that's a transition of why you're doing the uh, industry leaders push hard now? Yeah, because yeah, like, guys, is your focus? guys like Todd Price does, that are good people that are are bringing their people up and yeah. that have built a huge business. They deserve to be on there. Guys like John Cheplak, um, one of the greatest humans I've ever met in my life. Like, mm -hmm. man, that guy is an amazing fucking work of just overcoming the addictions mm -hmm. and the alcoholism to being one of the most enlightened. The dude's a monster. He's jacked. He's fucking ripped, but he is the nicest, most kind individual, most giving Salt like man. Guy. John's one of those guys that I can go and not talk to for two years. That never happens, but I cannot talk to him for two years and call him up and it'd be just like mm -hmm. not miss a beat, man. Just one of the greatest humans ever that I've met. 
And I, guys like that, I want those guys to get the attention that they deserve. They got, they deserve to, like a guy like John and Todd, they deserve to be way more famous than 99%, if not 100% of the people that, that people have their eyes on, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and these are guys, but here's the problem. Here, herein lies the problem with folks is, you know, I can go make a video or John or Todd and we make a video and we're like, listen, you got to go to the gym. You got to get off of drugs. You got to stop drinking as much. You have to be a good husband. You got to be this. You got to work hard. It takes waking up at four in the morning to get to this level. And people are like, I ain't trying to hear that shit. Talk to me about that four hour work week again. <laughs> yeah. And that's the problem. And so people are being, the masses are bought into these lies of what success looks like. Success mm-hmm. is not Lamborghinis and private jets. Those are byproducts of success. Those are symptoms that come along with success, but that's not success. Success is through helping people, serving your customer base, it, ha- building a corporate culture. That's what it takes. And in, in, in order to do that, if you're going to lead people, right, then I got to lead them by being the guy that goes to the gym in the morning, by being the guy that goes and does the deals, by being the guy that creates the culture, by being like, but people don't want to hear that because they don't want it. They want the results of being that guy without being that guy. Yeah. Oh, there, there's people that would just take a, an industry that like, there's people, let's, let's call them real estate agents. Okay. There's that that do two or three deals a month and will swear they don't have time to do anything. Yeah. Right. Oh, I don't got time to go to the gym. You have a whole, you're doing three deals this month, Jonathan. You don't got (laughs) fucking shit going on. Right. Like you're busy. You're busy being busy with, with bullshit. Right. Like Mm -hmm. it doesn't take an hour of your day. It's 30 hours a month to go to the gym, 30 hours a month. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, well, I don't have time. Well, maybe wake up a little bit earlier, you know? I think that was a strong pivot to get more people in the door when you said we're going to get them in with the money, mm-hmm. right? We're going to talk about money first, social media millions. We're going to help them make money. And then once we get our, our hooks in them with the lure of money, we're going to teach them how to spend that money and become a better human. Right. Well, That's worked out very well for us over the last two months. Yeah. Well, money's a magnifier. And so money will make somebody a bigger piece of shit or they'll yeah. make somebody a better person. In my case, the more money I've got, the better person I've become. Thank God. Right. Mm-hmm. Because when I'm poor, I'm a piece of shit. I rob your family. I'm just that guy. <laughs> but when I got money, I'll take care of your family and donate to charities that help them. Right. Like I'm, yeah. I'm just being honest. But most people and, and we see this and we try to get rid of these people pretty quick in our circle. Mm-hmm. But most people, they get money and their ego goes, well, no, I'm mm-hmm. fucking. And it happens fast. And it happens fast. Before it's they like, actually bro, have significant money. That's like, what I was going to say. The second it starts to get like a little bit more trajectory of like. Yeah. Making for going from making like five, 10 grand a month to making like 20, 30 grand a month, all of a sudden, like their morals show up real fast or the, lack thereof. The biggest egos Start cheating on wives and all kinds of stuff. The biggest egos immediately. Yep. Yep. <laughs> the biggest egos exist from two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year and under. Yep. Those yes. are the biggest egos. I found that out. Yep. Yeah. I, re- I really realized it. Absolutely. And Crazy. Be- because in and it's first year two hundred once somebody's been making let like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money. And, and once like year one, you make that and you go buy a nice home for $5,000 a month, right? Your mortgage. And you go buy a a Benz for a thousand dollars a month and you go get the nice truck that you've always wanted. And then you keep making 250 for five or six years. If you can sustain that, that, that income rate, then now all of a sudden your car's paid off, your truck's paid off. You got extra money. You're investing in real estate. Like we got to chase our dreams first. some nice home, nice car for a lot of people, maybe the Rolex or whatever. But the people that have been making $250,000 for 10 years that have saved their money, that have invested it right, those people become humble. It's the people that are brand new to money. And money money changes people, man. And 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 it makes it – and look, it changed me too. I, like when I was making – you know, two, I'll, I'll never forget this humbling experience in my life. I was making about three hundred grand uh, on the side doing training and stuff, and somebody's like, "Bro, I could write a whole check for your life in a day or some shit like that." It's like the fuck, post your fucking tax returns, and they did, and I was like, "Oh goddamn, I got a long ways to go." Yeah. <laughs> you know, never mind. But, like to, but I didn't get mad mind. at that I person. Like when people I didn't do get that. mad. Yeah, I got inspired you know by it. I, I was like, "Dude, that's what's that. possible." You know, when someone does that stuff, it really shows me who they are versus the clown out there claiming what they make. And telling people what they make to buy their product, I think that there should be a standard rule that if you claim to make something in the industry, yes. then you should post that everywhere. Yeah. Because if I, I've never told people what I make to sell, 
Not Make, once. I mean, Not one time you know. have I ever had to do that. I think that's actually really weak. I made a million dollars a year. Here's a product that I did to make it off of. Why don't you buy this product? Show me your ta- t- show me your tax returns. Mm-hmm. I, I think when I'm president of Texas, if a motherfucker says they make X amount of dollars a year, they, that's that's fine. We're just going to tax you on that. Yeah, that's what you pay taxes on. I like you that. know. For the record, yeah. I make a dollar a year. You know, yep. Yep. I like Steve Jobs. You know, when he went back to work at <clears> Apple, <throat> he made a dollar a year, took all the money in stocks. Smart. You Smart. know. Yep. So you have this massive shift going from influencer to industry leader, and. The talk of right now within people that are leaving Apex is that you were imploding. How'd that make you feel? Because you didn't talk about it. We didn't talk about it until two days ago. But when, yeah. when I saw that, I wanted to address it with you in, in Jan- December, January. But you were imploding. The end of an era is what was going It was everywhere. There were people saying that, everywhere. too. There was people making posts going, this is the end of another one. Like, bitch, I'm still fucking here. <laughs> and by the way, I don't need that fucking money to be able to do like you can't take away from me what the fuck I got in here. You could you, everybody could cancel Apex tomorrow and that would suck. I'm not going to lie. It would suck because it would unemploy people and it would it would be hurtful. And by all means, don't do that. But but I know how to hustle real estate. I know how to hustle cattle. I know how to hustle fucking ranches. I know how to hustle fucking. I know how to fucking do so much shit that you are never. I'm never going to be fucking broke, motherfuckers. Get over it. It's you never going to fucking happen. You know I don't how think to make money under- from everything. Like, I know how to that. make money from fucking coming. everything. I don't think people understand that Apex isn't is like 5% of what you make. They have no clue. And you don't run I've off never Apex. taken a check from Break Free Academy. Yeah. Not fucking one. It pays $5,000 a month through a fucking couple of cars that I got. And it's nice to use them. And I use them for marketing. And I drove one today. It's a McLaren 720S with a spider. Top down. It's a beautiful day outside. And <laughs> but Beautiful I mean, cold. I watch trends. <laughs> Freezing. You know? like yeah. and, and, and so, you know, um, I don't. I don't have a significant now. Look, look, I'm not dumb. It's bought this building and I own the building and that's great. But the building is, is as much as it's an asset, it's a liability because I got to make the monthly payment for it every mm-hmm. month. But it was cheaper to own this building than it was to continue paying for hotel rooms. So the building's not necessarily a flex. It's a necessity because of the business that we run. Mm-hmm. But people don't realize like I started a, a, a lending company in November. So that's, that's like at the end of November. So that's four months ago. I started a lending yeah, company. That thing's that. making me six yeah. figures a fucking yeah, let's month. Talk about all the new haters you now have in lending. That was yeah. interesting. <laughs> but to notice, to notice motherfuckers <laughs> are starting to loan money now too. Yeah. All these influencers are like, Oh, there he goes. He's loaning money. We're well, going to jump on that. You can't get wagon. mad yeah. when you gave no, them advice to. I'm not mad. I'm yeah. not mad. I'm that, just, I'm a loud, bolsterous person. Yeah, that's just that's, me. That's not mad. It's just me. Noted. I should have been a comedian. Passion. You, yeah, I think passionate. you actually are a comedian, um, sir. I've done that too. I was the first motherfucking <laughs> guy to go up and tell jokes on stage too. You Where know? was that at? Comedy uh, club? I did what that at like at? three different like influencer events. They didn't want me to speak because they didn't want me to outshine them. So they asked me if I'd come up and do comedy and I still outshined them. And <laughs> I got off. I got off the stage one time and uh, I always like I tell jokes that are way off color. But then I look for the people that might be offended and if that, that that might be offended by the jokes. And if they're laughing, I know I'm doing a good fucking job. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I got off the stage one time and Tim Grover walks up to me. And he goes, man, I've known you for a while. You got balls of steel, bro. I can't believe you fucking said that shit up there on that stage in front of all these people. I was like, fuck them. You know what I mean? At that time, I was about six drinks in, too. So I didn't give a shit anyway. Like, I was turned oh, the fuck up. Gosh. But, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm not scared to just go do stuff. You know, I just be doing stuff right now. Most people don't know me and you are on TV. We're on a brand new TV series right I know, now. I didn't even know I ain't that even that fucking aired. told this is the first time I've mentioned it to the mm. public. I've been on TV three fucking times. I've been on the Glenn Beck show. I've been on the the uh, well, million dollar listing yeah. New York, and now we're on the McBee Dynasty. But we're I'm like Dame Dash, bro. I'm just in the background. Yes. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm just the, like in the '90s when I was watching rap. Like all the badass rappers and Dame Dash never rapped. He was just in the background. And if you didn't know who he was, you were just like, who's this guy that's in all the. We haven't even the, watched that episode. The either. first, I haven't even watched it either. The first, but I get a lot of people going, is that you? Yeah, Fuck yeah, it is. Me too. And so uh, they're the first episode of Chappelle's show, the very first episode. This lady goes to take a piss. She opens the toilet and Dame Dash is there and he's like, rock a pads. Right? <laughs> that was the first time anybody even, like, see, that's what I liked about Chappelle is he realized that. that that guy was the guy and, and so many people were the fronts of the thing, but that guy was the guy and they like, but he never needed to tell you he was the guy. He never needed to come out and be the rapper. He didn't need to be in the front line, but he was in the background of a lot of shit going on. Right. Yeah. I met Dame last year. 
You know, him and his, his French poodle or whatever that thing was french bulldog right he had like a he's a character bro he comes up there dressed in like the swaggiest way that you could possibly with his dog and shit like on stage he was a cool cat you know i liked him but i was like in awe of the guy i was like damn that's like that's the dude that literally pioneered jay-z fucking beanie siegel that was the guy behind which event was that oh the one in philadelphia where the fight broke out they, I done oh, seen some shit, bro. Right. Yeah. I done seen some shit. That's I right. I was the only white speaker at this event, bro. And there was like a fight in the audience and shit, bro. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> They're like, people are bringing guns in. It's no, like, it's it cool. We got guns. There multiple people <laughs> Not that me. I don't kicked carry guns, but my team, you know. <laughs> what? Never mind. I didn't. I just. I'm just. I, I had to give podcast. an FBI disclaimer there. I don't carry guns, but my team. You know, I've got security. They carry guns. So. So on this episode, standing on business. Podcast, should we get started? Yeah. Should we go? <laughs> Are you guys ready? Um, it's interesting to look look at your life. You wrote uh, the article for Ed Milet to get into Forbes. Yeah. Right to help him with his blue check mark. I had to fight with them fuckers too. Yeah. And that's a hell of a story. They didn't want to put that firsts. on. And it's uh, it's it's not to um, brag about you, but. Yeah, it is too. I like it. But to get people to understand what you're going to have to endure to become um, wealthy in, in your life. So the reason why I asked you these questions is what's the next thing for you and Amy? You know, you got the ranch popping, you're buying mm-hmm. land like you're like no mm-hmm. other. What's next for you? Because you got lending apex in your ranch and land development. You're selling a big deal. You have a big deal going down. When are you going to talk about that? We we have eight million dollars in land. Uh, I don't think she knows that, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but right now we have eight million dollars in land alone. No comment. Um, <laughs> you know, um, we've got. I'm supposed to on Friday close like a, a almost nine figure deal that we've been working on for a while. Um, we own. What's a while? Uh, two years. Two years. Mm-hmm. Um, and if people know nine figures is just short of a hundred million. Well, we we three D printed apartment complex. Like, yeah. You know. When people say that, like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? <laughs> we 3D printed an apartment complex Dang. and then the sold thing. the thing for That's damn near nine figures. It's very cementy, you know? but they, yeah. 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 And, then, and then sold it, it for just, almost nine yeah. figures, you know, and, um, and it didn't cost that much to build it. And it's, it was the first of a kind, and I was in on that deal early, you know, and I have two apartment complexes that we're owners of. And so aside from the land, we have apartment complexes. I think we got it's about really just like building a, like, like for us, like we've been go, go, go. I think now it's a time of really just taking inventory and just creating a foundation for the future where you can really just everything is on autopilot and we're growing and you can be as wild as you want with investments as you want and just do your thing. And oh, I'm over that. Oh, mm-hmm. great. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. A, You're his mentor cool. for 2024. This. this- <laughs> But I was, that's, that's what I've been told. That's, that's what I've been told too. I, I didn't and know listen it. To, listen to Amy Stuman from here on out. But you know, this this month um, is is my first eight figure month, and Woo. I don't like. You know, it's weird even talking about that because you it's, are very you know, humble when it comes to that. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, we've had companies that that do billion dollars plus a year that we've been investors in for a long time, yeah. and we just, you know, I yeah. don't feel like if I was a good internet marketer, I'd be rubbing that in your fucking face. And, you know, that's what most people do. It's like, look at me, blah, blah, blah. But I still don't believe it. <laughs> like, no. I'm still like, how the fuck do we even pull? Like, I just said $8 million in land and I'm like doing the math in my head. I'm like, this is fucking crazy. Yeah. You know, we and, and guess what? We don't have investors. We barely have banks involved in those two. Two of the deals, we didn't even have banks involved in them. And uh, I didn't raise money. I'm not some internet panhandler. Invest in my thing and I'll pay you back 3% interest for the next 20 years like these fucking guys do. Yeah. And, and now we're actually loaning money and that thing's fucking taken off. You know, we're, we're probably pretty close to having eight figure months just in that this year alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're already having seven figure months. And so we're probably close to having eight figure months in that alone. I mean, the first month that I came out in the lending company, dude, we, we flooded this one company with $60 million worth of fucking applications and they fucking canceled us because they couldn't keep up with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I I think the big I mean, reason, though, like, pe- but people think that I need their mastermind money. Like, it, here, here's the here's the bigger thing: is the people that I can help. Their ego is so big. They're like, like I yeah. had a guy the other day, and he's like, "Yo, I've been I've been thinking about joining you guys. Like, why?" And he's like, "Well, you know, I'm making six figures a month. Well, good for fucking you. That's a couple days work for us around here. Yeah, you yeah. know, like I can teach you." How to get if you'll drop your ego, I can literally show you how to get where I'm at because I'm 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 not gonna say that I'm not smart anymore because I'm fucking brilliant. 
but I, I can <laughs> show you, you how there your you hustle <laughs> muscle can can take things to the next level, but your ego won't let you. And I'm not asking somebody to submit to me. I'm like, bow, like fucking Xerxes and 300, bow down to me and it'll all go away. It's like, no, join me, motherfucker. Let's kick ass together. Right. And so many people, they look at me, and I was explaining this to you this morning, Sean. They look at me and they think, oh, if that guy did it, I can do it better. He ain't shit. And they don't fucking even have a fucking clue of this humble character that I play on the internet. Like, again, this is the first time I've ever even talked about numbers in years, right? And there yeah. was a couple months ago, people were like, you know, oh, he's falling apart. Like, th th those people falling apart, those are the 250 <laughs> and below people that thought that because yeah. they don't understand what real wealth is. Wealth is something that you can't tax, you can't take away. And I got all that right here. You know what yeah. I mean? I got all that right here. I could sell this building for so much fucking profit that those people will never make in their life right now. Well, I think the big mm -hmm. reason, too, is that we've been through cycles where we, well, not cycles, but we've gone through like this like catapult where, you know, we started doing these big things and we're honest people. We're just like open and transparent. Yeah. But then we realized pe people, A, egos get involved once you start talking about dollar amounts and then B, people treat us differently and they kind of, I don't know, people have their handouts, number one, number two, but you, you can't, I feel like authentic conversations go to the wayside once people start getting money involved. You yeah. know what I mean? People yep. don't actually like have a conversation with you. Yep. They have a conversation with what they think they can get from you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like we've been at birthday parties and like, you know, I, I'm just a very friendly open person. Like, Hey, how's it going? I know none of these ladies in the room, know none of them, but I'm just nice. And some of them are like, who is she? And I'm like, that's cool. Be a dick. I don't care. I'm going to go hang out over here. Then. But then the second, like all of a sudden he's talking to some of these guys, husband, they find out like, like, Oh, like, like, you know, we're like flying on a jet to Cabo and this and this. All of a sudden, they're hey, like, hey, what's up, girl? Hey. And I'm like, bought you some oh, champagne? you learned. Oh. <laughs> well, let me, let me oh. give you a great example. Okay. <laughs> um, my wife's wearing like a 14 fucking carat diamond on her hand, right? Not that much. Hey, tell, tell the story, man, because I want to know. I like why you do that. Why oh, you guys what? do that. Ryan told me a beautiful story the other yeah. day. <laughs> well, He's like, my I'm wife like, has, well, how many carats is it? I don't know. I should know the exact one. I know the center stone's like it, eight. It, it costs as Two? much as a house, Ish. all right? Yeah. A nice house. And it and, shines as much as a house, and, too. And and <laughs> she also has a 30 <laughs> she also has a thirty carat diamond watch. And the reason yeah. why I bought these Great. things for her is, A, she's fucking awesome and, and you know, gives me blowjobs and stuff. So that, like, <laughs> you know, that's like a part of it. But, Thanks. But, but B, and she raises my kids. And But, but B, Perks you know, the all these other guys, they go make money and they're Gucci'd out and blah, blah, blah. They don't take care of their wives. They've got a Rolex on. They, their mm -hmm. wife's wearing a Casio. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or yep. no watch whatsoever. Dang and it. so I wanted to. I wanted to flex like our marriage. Like, hey man, mm -hmm. I bless my. Like, it, it's our shit. But she would never go buy that on her own. I, mm -hmm. I got to buy that for her, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. that's how marriage works. Like your wife's not going to be like, oh, I just showed up and bought a bunch of diamonds, or I don't think that's how it I'm works. I'm the thrifty one of the two, right? Yeah. Or not. And so, <laughs> yeah. but the other day we're at a soccer game, a baseball game. And this lady walks up to Amy and she's like, uh, clearly women know what that ring is, right? Like we've been out before and ladies are like, oh my God, your ring. What the hell is that thing, right? Oh, and you. so um, we're, we're at a, a baseball game and a lady walks up and she's like, well, what do you do? And Amy's like, oh, I'm a mom. And, you know, we have a couple businesses. It's like, she's the CEO of a large <laughs> fucking corporation, you yeah. know, like, but that's the humility of how we, we, we really roll. That's how both of us are. You know, people mm -hmm. ask me what you do for a living. And, and I really want to say everything, everything, <laughs> everything. But everything I, everywhere all at once. <laughs> and, but, and, and I learned if I say, Hey, I run a, a business association. Well, what's that? And then it draws me further into a conversation. So typically I, I tell people I own a software company, you know, mm -hmm. what do you do for a living? I own a software company. And they look at me, well, that makes sense. Flashy car, watch, yeah. tattoos. Okay, that makes sense. It, that was the path was of it? least resistance. And technology is like complicated. That. People don't usually ask questions They're right. Like, oh, it's a useful yeah. thing that people pay a lot of money for. Probably a lot of them yep. got it. Got yeah. it. I see Noted. that. Yeah, I absolutely love it. We were talking about the um, about Apex over the last couple of weeks, three weeks, really digging into the culture of the Apex and people. So this is for standing on business for people to understand what it takes to build culture. And what we mm. noticed is when you said ego, the people of Apex get egos, right? Yeah. And they get egos and they think that they've built something that's not theirs. It's Apex. It's yours. It's, it's your tooth, right? Mm -hmm. And then they go to leave Apex and what happens? Their, their engagement drops because their support came from Apex. What kind of advice would you have, or have for somebody 
that uh, could try to maybe keep their ego in check because they come in, they blow up with you, uh, with with you, and then they want to take from you and go do their own thing out of greed and build their own machine. But they haven't built their machine. They have a um, an influence of apex behind them. They go off. They get their asses kicked. Mm-hmm. How, how how do you eliminate that? How do you help with that process? Or, or, or is there even a way? I think. You- Go ahead. The easiest way to just encapsulate the way to prevent that is to just never stop learning. Mm-hmm. People, they get to a certain point of success, a certain point of engagement, a certain point of dollars in the bank every month, and then they just feel like they're the man. Yeah. And they just relish in that ego, and they don't realize. And, and people try to give them advice, and like, ah, oh, no, no. I, I, I'm like, look, look at what I've done. I got, never stop learning. If you're always have that open mind of there's more for me to know, there's more to me to understand, then there's no way that your ego can take advantage because your ego is open to advice. Like you're, yeah. you're open to some, for somebody, to, for the realization of there is somebody out there that has done more than me, that does know more than me. And to always just be available and open to somebody's advice, that, that's going to, you know drop ego in an instant yep. and prevent well, it from getting it's going to cost them a lot of money too because i'm watching a certain somebody i have my eyes on the certain person right now in apex mm-hmm. getting a lot of likes and comments and they're bagging about how good they are i go through everybody it's apex the yeah. only yeah. likes he gets are from our people in apex and comments in apex if he walks he has no idea what he's doing to his career yeah. well, it's crazy it, to yeah. me like Here's- what are you doing dude i'm gonna let him implode Here's what happens to people. Seriously, I'm going to teach them a lesson. Well, so we have a large association, and it's growing by the day. And so somebody gets in there, and I, I, I fucking tell people this all the time, and they don't listen mm-hmm. because people are lazy. It's just in, inherently lazy, right? Mm-hmm. And the path of least resistance is a lot sexier than the hard way in life. And I think that that's <clears throat> maybe the reason why I, I seemingly seem angry because I do things the hard way, right? I, I Again... I, you mentioned Ed Milet earlier. You know, I, I helped him get his blue check a long time ago. Great dude. You know, I believed in him then. I believe in him now. Goggins, I was with him before he was famous, before he even had an Instagram. Like, I, 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 I and, and I, I say this because I've watched these guys blow up and, and change the world around them and add so much value to people. And, you know, I, I'm not the guy that, that, that has taken that for granted. Now, now, what I say is some people come in. They get around me. They come into this association, and here's what happens: the the the. Imagine if I was out here bragging about how maybe I worked with David or Ed along before. Imagine if that was my significance, right? Like that that would be so weird to me, right? It's yeah. like I just I did a little favor for those guys, and I worked with David for a little while. He's a great dude, I, you know, awesome guy. And David was an anonymous person when we worked together. But here's what happens: people come into Apex, and the path of least resistance is post in the group and start a following from the group. Yeah. As opposed to like, what if I rode Ed Milet's coattails for the last four years, that would be weird. Right. Because if Ed, if Ed decides to retire or whatever, then my whole shit's over with because all I had was Ed's people. Right. Or it's the same with Goggins or Brunson or Kevin nations or any of these people that I've, I've worked with over the years. And so people come into apex and instead of building their machine on the outside, I'll tell you why. Instead of building the machine on the outside, they try to build their machine through our network. And guess what? The, the network, I'm not going in the network going, you know, Sean's a fraud, right? right. I, and Sean's, Sean's taking the path of least resistance. And so I don't, you know, they're customers. I want to serve them. I want them to win. But I watch them and go, that's a bad idea. But here's yeah. why they, and then guess what? People in Apex start seeing them and they're like, oh, this is a good post, blah, blah, blah. And they don't know you. They didn't grow up with you. They don't know what your numbers are, blah, blah, blah. So they start to support you, which is a natural progression of things. And then guess what? They go, yeah, I'm super fucking famous and blah, blah, because <laughs> I get 50 likes on my posts. And it's like, but those 50 likes were the people that you paid and joined the association. But that's not why you're supposed to pay. You're supposed to pay and go right. build 50 people on the outside because yeah. those and 50 people aren't going to give me. They may have, it's the L.A. thing that I just mentioned. They might give you a little bit of fame, but they're not giving you money. Yeah, right. absolutely. Right? And, but here's why people don't go outside and build their machine. This is why they take the, the path of less resistance. However, it, it's very hard. Um, and new people show up on my post every day. Because I'm building, I don't build my machine in Apex. I'm yeah. build Apex, and then that's part of my machine. But here's what people do: Let's say that it's Joe Blow the plumber, and and he really isn't running a very successful business. And you don't know that because you're in Maryland and you're in Apex, and you just assume since he's Apex, he's 
he is who he says he is. Yeah. And Joe mm-hmm. Blow, the plumber in Maryland, all of a sudden starts making these posts on Facebook. And he's like, you know, our business is taking off. And John Blow, that lives down the street, goes, the fuck you are, bro. I saw that you guys just shut down three locations last week. Right. Oh, fuck. The butt hurt. Oh, Jesus. There ain't no penetration. Fucking kills Ooh. him, right? And so... Then guess what happens, right? Then maybe they start making these motivational posts and motherfuckers like, dude, I just saw you smoke crack three days ago. Right. You know? And so, but in Apex, we don't know that because we're not in their neighborhood. Social we're not- media has the filter. Social media, you can hide stuff. When somebody and- lives in your hometown next to you, like, I see what you do. Like, yeah, yeah that's yeah, not like, real. I, yeah. I had a guy the other day, like, uh, uh, and, and he was like, dude, this guy that you're saying does this stuff. I live down the street from him. He doesn't have 50 fucking work trucks. He's got two. Yeah. And he's oh, yeah. he's got a fucking P.O. box. Exactly. And and, and I'm yeah. like, that's what they're scared of. So they go to this safe place called Apex and they build it in there and they think they've actually Nobody done something backstory. when all they've done yeah. is lie. Yeah. Right. And, and not everybody's that way. Just a few of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But because most people in the Apex are just they're they're just they are who they are. But there's always the, the what I call the coyotes that come in and try to sucker the baby cows into, you know, coming out. And so mm-hmm. so but but what happens is I did that shit. Yeah. Right. I came out and said, I'm coaching loan officers and motherfuckers went, dude, you lost your loan officer license. What the fuck are you going to do? I don't know, bro. Watch. I can't predict yeah. the future, but I'm willing to do the work. Watch. I don't know why you wouldn't support me and want me to do better and be better. Why don't you get on that level? You know, or I tell them, fuck off. Just watch me win because I'm not going to give up. And guess what? That's hard. It's hard. It's hard when your friends from high school show up and go, dude, you've been to prison twice. And you think you're fucking Tony Robbins. Get your shit together. It is together, bro. I'm working on it. Why don't you support me? Yeah. Right. Why? Why aren't you happy that I'm trying to change my life? Why aren't you happy that mm-hmm. I'm over here trying to be a different person than the guy that went to prison twice? Why don't you try to cheer right. me on so I don't have to go back a third time? Right. And but most people are too cowardice to fucking go and and fight the good fight to build their machine on the outside because they're like, oh, man, what if my family, I, my family, man, my fucking uncle. One time I told a story about being adopted. My uncle goes, you weren't adopted. What the fuck do you mean I wasn't adopted? <laughs> I was literally born Ryan Russell McCord. I am Ryan Keith Stuman. I was adopted by Keith fucking Stu. What the <laughs> fuck? Like, you were there in court that day, you cocksucker. Like, what the fuck? But this is the shit that I've had to deal with. <laughs> but I kept building. Most people, uncle punches them in the face, right? I punched my uncle in the face a few times over the years. But uncle, and that's probably why he was mad. But he got yeah. mad that I was Mikey. jealous. Most people, they're like, oh, my uncle that works at Walmart which is his job oh my uncle that works at walmart fucking he roasted me on social media i better go back into apex apex safe space where my uncle's not there and i'm like fucking uncle brian fuck off bro you work at walmart watch me win why does it always got to be the uncle it was the uncle that did it to me too man he was the first one to crush my dream of being an astronaut (laughs) yeah i mean seriously you know years old i'll never forget it the number one toucher changed my life the number one toucher of people is the uncle you could have been could have been if it wasn't you for him. You kind of fit the mold of an That astronaut. job don't pay for shit anyway. You know? No, and being on the moon would have been cool if that ever You'd happens. be famous. You'd be lonely up there, bro. <laughs> yeah. Ain't got no pussy on the moon. <laughs> he, he looks like he could eat some space food. You know, some you space know? food. You yeah. know, you take some, some space dehydrated food <coughs> Up there trying to get some moon pussy. That oh. shit don't exist. All right, so there, exists. There's, a, there's a mini lessons in, in this episode of Standing on Business. So, so the, 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 in, in conclusion, in conclusion, you have to fight that resistance. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, and, and so many people, they go to the safe space and they take the easy way out. But listen, my uncle only said that shit once, right? Yeah. You know? The, the haters from high school, they only said that shit once. Uh-huh. I had a couple guys from high school back in 2014, 2015. They were like, bro, I feel like you're fucking talking down to all of us. And I was like, I don't feel like I'm talking to you guys at all. <laughs> we'll at fucking all. kick your ass. Well, here's my address. <laughs> you know how many times I've had? I'm not a fighter. I'm not for the record. I don't like to fight. Don't fuck with me. Just leave me alone. I have security. Um but you know how many times over the years people have said, I'm going to fuck this dude up, right? Now, I want you to yeah. take this picture, okay? I'm typically next to, in the past, like Pastor Keith, Steve Weatherford, Cafe Anderson. I take a lot of pictures. David Harris. Those dudes are all giant humans. Yeah. And so you look at me, you think I'm a 120-pound, fucking 4 foot 11 little dwarf of a human because these guys are giant. Dwarf's One time dude. in 2017 or 18, I had this dude, and he is just all over Facebook, I'm going to fuck this dude stooming up. I'm going to fuck him back when you could say shit like that. I'm going to kick his ass and fuck that guy. And I got a, I got a gig speaking at an event. And this guy's like, I'm going to that event too. It's in my hometown. I'm going to fuck stooming up at this event. 
And I'm like, oh, Sending shit. Sending you these DMs? Dude, on, dude, he was putting it public, bro. And people were sending me screenshots. Bro, if I'm taking you out, I ain't going to tell you. And, and, and so I called the owner of the event. And I was like, look, because I had a bad reputation back then, right? It's like this internet, you know, hardcore yeah. prison guy. And I'm like, look, man, I'm not trying to start fights. But let me send you some screenshots. I'm coming to your event. And I'm speaking because I'm not a coward. But I just want to let you know, if this dude starts, if some shit breaks out, it ain't on me, bro. I'm just what over here doing say? my job. You know, he was telling people he's going to fuck me up. No, there. I know. The owner of the, the event. The owner is like, you know, this is a really weird thing, Ryan. I mean, I'm not sure if we should keep you on the deal. And I was like, well, I just wanted to be upfront and honest with you so that you don't think I started a fight because I'm not there to start a fight. So I go speak on stage. It was at this thing called Meltdown in the Desert. I go speak on stage and it's like me and Sean Whalen. And Sean Whalen and I were like, we had been beefing at that time for whatever reason. And we like worked our shit out there too, right? And so, like, I go and I meet Sean, we work some shit out, right? He had rode on his bike. I go out front, taking pictures with a couple people, and this dude shows up. And I knew what the dude looked like. I was on high alert for his ass, because you're not going to sucker punch me, bitch. Nuh-uh, uh-uh. No, I'm ready right? for it. I done fucking had, like, I was telling somebody this morning, ready. this is going to be very offensive, but, like, I done had to take sh- showers in prisons. You know what I'm saying? By the way... I had dudes dressed as chicks in our dressing room and locker rooms and showers long before that was cool. <laughs> I'm just saying, right? Long, long before that was a thing, I was having to deal with it, right? So you're not going to fucking scare me. So this dude shows up, and I'm thinking, and, and I'm taking pictures, and a camera guy's there, and I'm taking pictures, and I'm taking pictures, and he gets closer in the line. And finally, when he gets in front of me, you know what the motherfucker says? Dude, I've been you, a big Ryan. fan for a long time, bro. Because he realized I was about three times his fucking size. That it, most of my friends, I hang out with Steve Kuklo. That guy makes everybody standing next to him look like a fucking tiny human, right? <laughs> and again, I'm not a huge guy. For those of you that have never met me, I'm 5'10", 200 pounds. I'm in great shape, but I'm not a huge guy. But my friends are fucking giants. And they make me look like a fucking midget. Every, they made me look like a skinny crackhead midget because they're so fucking big. Then when this guy realized that about six inches and about 40 pounds on him, he's like, I'm a big fan, bro. Will you sign my book? <laughs> I'm like, fuck. Cowards. Which That's I was grateful dude. for because I didn't that want the fight anyway. Times. I was fucking yeah. super happy. I was like, oh, that went well, way well. Thank you, God. That went way better oh, than, than bless. And I'm not saying smaller people than me can't kick my ass, right? Like, there's, there's I've seen dudes in prison beat the shit out of other dudes in prison that were a lot bigger than them. So you never can underestimate somebody. And again, I'm not, a, I'm not like some bully, tough guy, but it was like the weirdest thing to me is like this dude. Talk. I literally have screenshots where he says he's going to fuck me up, and then he asked me to sign his book. What's so he going to go back and tell his people? I didn't run into Ryan, but I got an autographed book from him. I don't yeah. fucking... Yeah, it, don't make, it makes no sense. You know, we got a mastermind that's out there right now that all they do is talk about us. It's really weird to it, me. It is. It's really know? strange that they would build something like that. And, and that guy, about us every day. that whole mastermind's <laughs> built because of my work. People are like, I built my machine. No, you didn't. You borrowed my spark plugs, bitch. <laughs> Can I have him back now? Man, it's, well, it's interesting. Yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad we're going into the uh, industry leader space. Yeah. For sure. Mm, well, that you was know, a powerful I, move. I've been in time. the industry leader space. It's just some of those people turned into influencers, right? Yeah. Like, and, and I mean, here's the other thing. Amy and I, a lot of people were trying to get around us a few years ago because we had a lot of famous friends. And I got rid of a lot of mm-hmm. my famous friends because I, I'm just not like a lot of them, right? Mm-hmm. And I realized that. You know, and this is the struggle. It's like, I like money and I know that getting more famous will get us more attention, which will lead to more money and and being able to help people because I get paid to help people. So I measure money. The more money I have, the more people I've helped. It's that, it's that simple. Right. And so we realized a lot of these people didn't share our core values, which is fine to each is to own. And that doesn't make them bad people. Just doesn't make them our people. Right. And so, but I noticed that as soon as people didn't try to get proximity to us, to our, our friends, then what happened is the, the more genuine person came in, right. you know, like, yep. you know, once we, what, I still, I was with the famous musician three days ago, this motherfucker, God damn it. He, he, I'm sitting at me casino at the mall. Right. <laughs> and, and he's had a few drinks. He's super famous musician. We had, he had a few drinks and he had just come back from Miami and he had like $80,000 in cash in his backpack. Right. He offers the fucking waiter a hundred bucks to go get him some chapstick. And I'm like, bro, I'll walk to the store. It's literally fucking two doors down. He goes, fuck that. He's got chapstick. I'll just get it from him, right? Like, he's just, <laughs> he's fucking having a good time, right? And and we get up and we leave, okay? And he's dating another super famous celebrity, right? And we're like talking to her on FaceTime. And I don't, I'm not in that world in, in that 
celebrities world. And he's like, do you know who that is? And I was like, I don't have an idea. And he's like having to explain it to me, which made him, he's like super annoyed because I don't know who this person with 10 million followers is and shit. So anyway, we walk upstairs and he goes, fuck, I left my bag downstairs. Oh. We're in the middle of the mall and he just left a fucking bag with almost a hundred grand cash in it in the middle of the mall. I'm like, shit, you want me to go down there and get it? He's like, no, nah, I'll go get it. Like five minutes later, he's like, it was still there. <laughs> like, <fuck." laughs> but but I used to go take pictures with these people and like, oh, fuck, right. look who I'm hanging out with. It's just me and my fucking boy here. Fucking this is my, and this dude's been my fucking boy for 10, 15 fucking years, longer than I've known Amy. So 15 years. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but I don't do that anymore because I don't want to attract people to go, oh, you know, such and such. Yeah. yeah. Oh, such and such is your home fucking boy. Holy shit. I need to be friends with Ryan because he's got famous friends. And what's happened is I've start, stopped doing that and less people have approached us. But more genuine people who really want to be around us for us With, and not because of the proximity of who we and know. Those people not only are just better people, they're actually smarter, more value, have but like businesses are ten times the you know what I mean? Like if somebody's clout chasing, if somebody's looking for yeah. for fame, they're not in alignment. Their core values aren't set up right. Yeah. And guess what? When your core values are set up right, you'll you know this. When your core values are set up right, the success just happens. Yep. That well that's totally why follows. when that guy comes to town, he's like, Yo, you want to go to dinner? You know, mm -hmm. that's why a lot of times I take people to the cowboy club because you can't have a camera in there. Mm -hmm. So nobody can take pictures and be like, look, Stumans with such and such, you right. know, because if we found that out, if somebody tagged us, we could tell the the boss lady fucking she ain't playing. Stacy, mm -hmm. she'll fuck your ass. You don't give a fuck who you are. <laughs> at the cowboy right? club? Yeah, at the cowboy Stacey, club. She'll kick your fucking. Huh? Stacy does not She's fuck around. Best. Shout out to Stacy. I'm I'm I'm. I'm talking good about you, not bad in case this gets... I love you. You're my favorite person at the Cowboy Club, right? She don't mess around, though, huh? <laughs> no, she does not yeah. fuck around, right? That's good. And, and, and so, you know, I like there because nobody can take pictures because I like, you know, mm -hmm. I do like to keep my life private. You know, I've hung mm. out with some... I've, I've smoked weed with every rapper I've wanted to smoke weed with. I've fucking been to every party that I want to be in. I've spoke on every stage. And, mm -hmm. and I realized, like she was saying, you know, the, the, the disgenuine people would show up. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I want people to like me for me. And by the way, nobody's going to fucking believe a word I said on this video. They're going to be like, <laughs> this guy's just over there, clout chasing, capping, blah, blah, blah. I got receipts for all of this. Yeah. You know, like we'll, you can we'll edit you can, in the receipts uh, after you, you make a claim. We're gonna put that yeah. receipt or that it, video. I've clip. got the receipts yeah. for it. It's you know, crazy. the article with Ed Milad, <sighs> the pictures with. They didn't the, want to publish that. They were like, clearly, this guy. They the didn't Ed know who Ed paid was. Paid Ryan. Yes. So, like you can't yeah. just sit here and create an article just for like no, like this is like a great like this is a great yeah. guy. He's yeah. amazing. Like this is a it's authentic article yeah. to provide value because this guy's a great guy. I was going to speak on Marshall Silver stage, 2017. Okay, Ed just sold his shares for the first time of WFG for $400 million. It's public, so it's not like I'm telling a, a Ed's business here. And and uh, a guy named Ulysses Usana, uh, who is an Apex member, hits me up. And he says, hey, I've got this guy. He's, he's fucking cool as shit. And he needs somebody to get him in Forbes so he can get a blue check on social media. And so I'm like, okay, you know, I don't do that, right? I mean, I write for Forbes, but... And dude, I have plaques on the wall from Forbes and I, I, I'm still their one of their top members and I don't even write for them anymore. Right. And ever since Amber's left, I haven't done that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he goes, uh, let me give you his number. Call him. So I text this guy. I don't know who he is. It's Ed Milet. It could be John Smith for all I give a shit. Right. But Ulysses is a client. He's a good dude. He's never asked for a favor before. So I call Ed and Ed goes, I can talk to you. I text Ed and Ed goes, I can talk to you tomorrow. You know, I do a good Ed Milet version. Hey, brother, I can talk to you tomorrow, right? So I can talk to you tomorrow at 11 a.m. And I was like, dude, I go on stage at 1. So if I call you at 11, I just need you to answer so that we can, you know, mm -hmm. discuss whatever it is you want. And he's like, how much money are you going to want? It's like, I don't do this for money. So let's just have a discussion, okay? So I got to speak at Marshall Silver's event 2017. I go, and I, I, I remember where I was. I was at the Palms Hotel and I was dressed in a suit, right? So I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I must have been high as giraffe ass because that's not normally how I operate, right? I remember I even have a picture of this where I took a picture of myself indoors with a suit and sunglasses on, like Vegas, Ocean Swell, or some fucking <laughs> douchebag shit. But anyway, so we got a so for that. I call Ed, and Ed answers the phone, and the first thing he says, he says, "Buddy," he says, "Brother." My gas, my uh, my jet is gassed up, and I'm headed to my mansion in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I got five minutes to talk to you. And I went, there was a lot to take in there, my friend. Uh, <laughs> you, you have your jet? You have a jet? And he's like, yeah, I, I have a jet. 
And I was like, like you, you own it, your own jet. Like, fuck, I never met anybody like that before. And he's <laughs> like, he's like, yeah, I just sold my company for four hundred million dollars. And I was like, why, why Idaho? And he goes, Coeur d'Alene. It's beautiful. John Elway lives there. Tony Robbins has a house there. And I'm like, what? <laughs> okay, this is gonna take more than five minutes, brother. And, <laughs> and so. He then tells me this story about how he sold WFG and how he built it and all this stuff. And I'm just like, wow, I'm fucking enamored by this guy. I don't know who the fuck he could have been John Smith, but now all of a sudden he's Ed fucking Milet to me. Mm-hmm. Nobody, yeah. no, he didn't have a podcast yet. Didn't he, he maybe been on Instagram for a month, like maybe he had two, 3,000 followers, right? His son, he tells me the story. He goes, one night I'm sitting in my house at, in, in uh, Coeur d'Alene, beautiful city, by the way. I've been to that. Uh, he sold that house. That is the most, I, I, again, penthouse tours with Frederick Eklund, L.A. Beverly Hills tours with Josh Flagg. Ed Milet's house in Coeur d'Alene was the most amazing set of real estate I've ever seen in my entire life. And I've been in Tommy Hilfiger's house. I've been in, like, Justin Bieber's house. I've, I've seen some fucking shit, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, I, when I say that that house, I don't know why the fuck he sold it, but that, I'll probably because it's Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. But, but I mean, uh, just on fucking real work of art and real estate. Mm-hmm. And so, but at this time, I don't know none of that shit. Right. And so I'm like, okay, so tell me like the story that you really want me to publish. He goes, well, I'm sitting on the back porch of my house in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And Tony Robbins lives right across the lake from me. I'm thinking it's a small lake. Once you show up at Coeur d'Alene, fucking Idaho, you realize that lake's the size of the fucking ocean, right? But anyway, so, like, I guess Tony's sitting over there with a fucking telescope or some shit looking at him. I don't fucking know. But anyway, he goes, Tony texts me. He says, pick up the phone. I answer the phone. I've been a Tony Robbins client for a long time. And Tony says, you know, I'm thinking about retiring. And uh, I got to find somebody to replace me first so I can get out of this stuff, you know? And he goes, uh, there's a guy, and I won't name names. He goes, there's a guy in New York. A lot of youngsters follow him, but he's kind of aggressive, and people our age aren't going to follow him, so he's not the guy. There's a guy in L.A., and he's pretty famous and stuff too, but he, he's kind of a cornball, so he's not going to be the the guy. There's a guy in Florida who's really salesy, but I don't think that he's the, the guy to do the job either. He's like, he's not saying anything bad about him. He's just saying why he doesn't think that they're the guy, he's right? The guy. He said, there's a guy in St. Louis, but he cusses a whole lot, and I'm not sure that he's the guy either. Then he goes, so that leaves me with you, Ed. I think you're the guy that, that's got the right temperament, that, that already has the money, that's not going to let an ego get out of control. And so we're going to start this process and I need you to log into Instagram. And Ed goes, well, what's Instagram? And he goes, is Max there? That's Ed's son. And he goes, I remember the story. It's clear as a fucking bell. He goes, is Max there? And because I'm making notes, son's name's Max, because I want to get to know this guy. So I'm like making notes about like, hey, this guy's living out goals, right? Tony Robbins is calling him, asking him to be the next fucking Tony Robbins. He's got a private jet, some mansion in some fucking weird spot in Idaho. Like, what fucking? All right. So. He goes, have Max log you into Instagram and create you an account. And he goes, so I did it. And he goes, and so I heard next step is I need a blue check if I'm going to be somebody. So that's what we're talking about here. And I'm like, okay, well, okay, let me ask you some more questions. And I asked, you know, how he did this, how he did that. And I wrote this whole article about him. Long ass five minute call. And I get him. Yeah, it was an hour and a half, by the way. I was like (laughs) fucking 10 minutes late to the stage, right? Uh And so, and probably burnt a shitload of jet fuel, by the way, but he's rich. You don't give a fuck. And so, (laughs) and so I go and I spoke on stage. I get done. I go on the airplane home, the commercial airplane, and I write this, this article. And I send it to Forbes, and Forbes is like, fuck no. No. No, you got paid to write this. No, I don't do that. I promise you, I'll show you my bank statements. Nobody's ever paid me. I don't even know this guy. I just think he's a genuinely cool guy. And he goes, and the Forbes underwriter goes, well, you can't publish that here. So I called the guy, Clinton, over, I think that's his name, over at Influensive, I believe. And I was like, can I publish this article? And he's like, who's this guy? It's like, just trust me. When, when it it may not go viral in the beginning, but this dude's going to be the guy. And this will be the fucking article that you want. You want to be the first person to publish this about him. And he's like, you're not even a writer for our publication. I was like, you just got to trust me. You know, I had a, mm-hmm. a, a Ulysses connected me to this guy. So then I published it on Influensive. Six months later, that became the most art- the most shared article in the history of that publication at that time. I don't know if it still is, but at that time, the guy calls me back and he's like, bro, thank you. That's fucking <laughs> smart move on your end. It's like yeah. smart move on your end to accept it. <laughs> so I had to go back to Forbes because I promised Ed Forbes. How am I going to be a little bitch and be like, I didn't get Forbes, but I got some one-off place, right? So I go back to Forbes and I wrote this article about Tony Robbins and Grant Cardone 
and Ed, right? But I just like put quotes. I wrote this article, but put quotes by those three guys in there. So they knew Grant Cardone and Tony Robbins weren't paying me. And so, and I needed Ed to be matched up with their stature because he's, I think he's probably, he's probably richer and he's a better communicator than both of those guys, in my opinion. And so I wrote this article. The underwriter calls me again. I already told you about this guy. I was like, I'm telling you, you're going to appreciate the fact that y'all quoted him before any fucking body else. I'm telling you, I'll put my whole fucking account on the line for this shit. I'm telling you, nobody knows who this guy is, but he's a big fucking deal and he's going to be an up and comer and you're going to, you're going to not stop talking about him at some point in the future. You want to be the first to this thing. Are you sure? I'm fucking positive. All right, Ryan, if we find out that this guy paid you. And so then I sent him to Ed, the articles that I wrote. And he's like, brother, <laughs> he always says that, right? He's like, thank you so much. Nobody's ever said such things. Nice. Is that about me? Blah, blah, blah. And then about it, I asked him, I said, okay, man, I want my own jet in the mansion in Coeur d'Alene. Can you coach me? And he goes, I don't do that, man. I don't think you could afford it. And I was like, you don't know what kind of money I got. <laughs> and he goes, well, I coach people like A-Rod and, and Lady Gaga or Madonna or whoever the fuck it was at the time, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, oh, uh, well, I mean, how much are we talking? He goes, but here's the thing. The guy in St. Louis that I mentioned. I'm going to start this thing with him. And I didn't know the guy in St. Louis. Turns out the guy in St. Louis was Andy Frisella. And Andy had asked me to be on his podcast like six months before, but we just didn't connect. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know him or Ed. And he goes, he goes, we're going to start a, a little mastermind together. And uh, I'll call you when, when we get that thing started. Okay, man, put me on the speed dial list, man. Call me first. So he did. And he called me and I immediately paid the money right then and there on the spot and became the very first member of of Arte at the time, right? And then I go to our very first meeting and I meet Andy and I'm like, Ed's cool, but fucking this guy, Andy's a fucking badass, bro. Like this guy, <laughs> like Ed's like a very nice guy. You know what I mean? Polished, but like, yeah. Andy's more like me. I'm like, that guy's fucking, he's into cars. Like I can't afford a jet yet, but I got cars, right? And like, <laughs> like, you know, and then, you know, we've, I've been, you know, associate of those guys. I use the word friend loosely, right? Cause it's not like I'm at their kids' birthday parties yeah. or anything, but I've been associates with those guys. I became the number one for a period of time, the number one referral partner to Arate for a while and made mm -hmm. good money with those guys doing that. But that's like, that's like, I did it with Frederick Eklund. I did it with David Goggins and then Ed Milet. I, I met Andy before, I guess maybe he was already famous at that point. I don't know. I didn't know him at that point. Right. But this is, I've seen him go up a lot. He didn't have a million followers yet, but I've seen him go up a lot since yeah. then mm -hmm. and really become like, a, you know, Ed and Andy have really become like world changers at this point, you know, but um, still, still waiting on somebody to lift me up at some point, you know, <laughs> coming baby, I'm standing on business. That's good. <laughs> That's some good shit, dude. I like that. Stuff. But, but the, the I can tell you stories about so many people like that. You know what I mean? It's those, those are just big names, but so many big names over the years that, that like I was there first, like the moon, you know, maybe I'm an astronaut. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to believe this though. People are no. going to watch this. They're going to go, Suman's just a fucking bold faced liar. But I got receipts for all of it. Go Google Ed my let Forbes and see that article from We're working on something cool for you. That'll, uh, that'll uh, prove it all. It's going to be pretty sweet. No. It's going to be pretty cool for you coming up. But yeah, it's an interesting, it's an interesting 15 years. And I think it, mm -hmm. if anybody can take away from this, that if you can do it, anybody can do it. Cause you're nothing special. You just outwork everybody. That's it. And yeah. you had the hardest road possible starting out with the hardcore closer. Probably not the best brand name no, to, you know, to no. get off the ground and continue. Do you know how hard it was like emailing continue. people? Like that is immediately flagged. Yeah. Before. I mean, yeah. I've been, like, it's, the it's one not thing that, that immediately banned. goes to spam the word yeah. hardcore. Hard. Yeah, I'm hardcore. not shadow banned. I'm like porn banned because of the hardcore. <laughs> Like, yeah. and, and, yeah. and, and here's, here's what Poor I do know. I'm very, I'm on the watch list for sure, but it's not because of the bad content. It's because of the name and it makes yeah. sense. The AI flags it. Yeah. Um, but, but here's, here's the other thing is like, if I wouldn't have done this shit the hard way, would I be an attractive character? Uh, right. No chance. If I would have been like one time I was on Brad Lee's podcast before he was fucking famous before anybody knew who the hell Brad Lee was. And I was on his podcast in 2017, 2016. It was a long fucking time ago. I've been on there since then, but I was really high the last time, so it was a terrible episode. <laughs> and uh, and and he asked me on the p podcast, he goes, would you rather have $100 million given to you or $10 million that you earn? And I went, well, I'd rather have $10 million I earn. He goes, you're fucking stupid. You could have fucked off $10 million and still had 90 left if somebody gave it to you. And I went, well, yeah, you got a point. I guess I would take the 100 but I look at it now, it's like, ah, fuck that. I'd rather just go get my own 10 million. Yeah. And, and because 
if I feel like if I'm going to lead an association like Apex, if I'm going to run a company like Closer Capital, if I'm going to build a brand like Phone Sites, then if somebody was like, oh, he was handed all this money and, you know, he hasn't really worked for it, then people would just have one more reason to hate on me, discredit me, not believe me, not think that they could do it. But instead, the people watching are going, all right, so let's take account real quick. Uh, adopted, dropped out of school, on drugs, prison, prison again. Divorce, divorce again and again. Yeah. Uh, and again. You know, um, <laughs> he, 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 he fell apart at this. This he fell apart in 2010. Lost his loan officer license. 2017 got out of an industry completely, and everybody hated him for about six months. But he's done all that. Yep. Surely, fuck my excuses. Yeah, Surely, uh. versus the people going. Yeah, but that guy got an inheritance or that guy fucking had an easy life or he grew up with a trust fund or his mom and dad were good to him. It's like, no, man, I was up in there sharing showers with them people long before it was popular. You know, now we're going to put a string of wins together that uh, will be unmatched. It'll be powerful. Absolutely powerful. But it's it's the ultimate story, the force of average meteoric highs, rock bottom lows. Mm -hmm. And. You know, but I, I have avoided staying in the middle. I have avoided if, if Apex is the top of the mountain, I have avoided that base camp at all costs. I've either been way below it or way above it, but I've yeah. never been stuck at base camp. You know, I love it, man. I love it. Standing next on thing, business. Standing on business. The next thing we got to start working on is um, wealth creation between you two. Yeah. You got to get that core shot between you two on how, because yeah. I, I was talking with Amy, financial illiteracy. It's amazing. Surreal. It's like, so it's, scary. Yeah. Like nobody, they won't know what to do with 200 that. bucks or, or they yeah. wouldn't even think it's worth it. Right. Yeah. That's, that's the next thing that I think with your ranch and everything you have going on mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. come on as CEO, you guys got to do, do some financial education, Absolutely. like basic, put $100 into a mutual fund and do that every week for year after year after year. If that's all you can do and wake up 15 years and be living off that income. Right. Something so simple. Uh, because that's, that's how I started. That's you how know? you started. I started in 2005. I started putting, uh, it was either 200 or 500 bucks a pay period into the stock market. Yeah. And I wasn't like, you know, yeah, and I was trading options and blah, blah, blah. I was like, nah, I just bought shit that made sense. Like, okay, Microsoft, that guy's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. I'll just buy that. Oh, Apple, that guy's not going anywhere. I'll just buy that. <laughs> Amazon, as soon as they stop just selling books, they'll actually make some real money. I'll probably invest in that, you know, and, and I bought and sold and bought and sold and borrowed against and, you know, leveraged that over the years. And, and you know, and then then when I got enough money to where I could put 20% down to buy a house, I, I bought a real estate and property. And then when I got enough money to where I could buy a business, I bought a business. And But it all started with the dis- – if I didn't develop that discipline at 200 or $500 a pay period, it's, I would have yeah. never had the discipline to do fucking millions of dollars of investments now. The biggest Powerful. thing that I really want to teach in that financial literacy course, like the basic framework, but also the understanding that money is emotional. If you don't have the discipline to, like, put money away – and like if you put money away and then you have to go grab and you have to do this to buy that thing, that's emotional. Yeah. You know what I mean? If when you are have the ability to put money away and not touch it, that's something that is you have the discipline, you have the self control, you are emotionally sound. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. people that are people that are broke, people that just can't sit there and just create that nest egg. There's there's something more to the story than just that. And then and, as far and, and by as- the way, I also have videos where I was with Grant Cardone before anybody knew who he was, too. I uh, saw those. <laughs> that was a trip. I just wanna, I definitely love that. Like, this, the story, like, we, like, the show should, this episode should be called, like, Story Time with Stuman. But, like, the stories story that, that I was, like, I was there, <laughs> not not first, because Grant was already <laughs> successful. He was already successful, he, but but he wasn't social media successful yet. You know, no. He was already successful, he just wasn't famous yet. But I, but I saw it in the guy. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? We're talking 2011 or 12. I saw it. I was like, this guy, he's gonna be, he's gonna be the guy one day, man. I need to get I need to get in with him. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I need to interview him. I need to show my people who this guy is. You know, and because uh, I tried to run the same play with Grant that I ran with Frederick and Josh, but then Grant went. Grant's a smart dude, so he's figured out how to do it himself. He's he's mm-hmm. a lot like me in a sense. He's like, you know what? I don't need anybody. I'll go just go run the shit myself. Yep. You know, and he did. Yep. Love it. I love it. Well, that's a great episode right Story there. Story time with Stuman. Standing, standing on business podcast. <laughs> that is a lesson of life that if you were to take this podcast and uh, break it down, yeah. you could go do some big shit. Especially if you just go do the research and Google the yeah. information that you gave them. Yeah. And then you, um, your, your credentials in finance. Mm-hmm. What are your credentials? Um, so I, have, I was in um, professionally in the corporate financial for over a decade. I retired. It's been retired. great. 
Um, but I um, started in the stock market and at a very, very young age because my dad was wonderful enough to let me go in and I had a huge interest and I wanted to intern. So they let me in the summers and I would just became addicted to learning how to grow money and like the framework and the foundation. I was always a saver. Always. Yeah. Ever since I was little, I had a piggy bank and I would save and save. And I loved building money and just thinking of what I could do to make it grow. Like just from like five years old, I always wanted to. So I, I'll never forget interning in these offices. And I would always help the the branch manager. And so I would have these helping these plans and whatnot. And when, even when I was younger, I remember building these um, portfolio frameworks. And I, it was I was just doing the paper aspect of it. But I could see how they built these portfolios. And it was so fascinating to me. From family to family, see, seeing the way they structure their trusts and their 529 plans and watching their expenses and the way they had it flowed. And it was so intricate and so well thought out. And But it, everyone was different. It was so fascinating. And so I got my Series 7, my Series 63, and I went from being, you know, just a little intern um, to growing um, myself just in terms of development. And I got recruited and recruited and recruited. And it was biggest blessing. And so I got super successful, super quick and making a lot of money really young. And it was great. And now, and, and, and honestly, the, the best lesson though, the best lesson was from, from early on seeing the yeah. frameworks of how wealthy families <clears throat> structured their money. And nobody teaches that. Nobody yeah. teaches that. Big they, problem. Because money comes with power and, and <laughs> right. they don't want you to have power. It's a big yeah. problem. That'll be a fun. That'll be a fun course to be right. to be uh, watching in, in on. I feel like that's what everybody, everybody, they see like a fancy car, like a Lambo on the road. And everybody's thinking, how much money does that guy have? What does he What does he do to make his money? How much money does he have? Like, what beach house does he have? Everybody's so curious. Mm -hmm. Nobody talks about it. Yeah. You know? Industry leaders. Woo. Love it. <laughs> Powerful. You retired and now out of retirement. Yep. We, got, we got work to do. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Back to work, bitch. <laughs> we got work to do. No more Tuesday morning yoga for you. <laughs> well, I got a hell of a day. I got to roll. Yeah. Let's roll. 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 See you yeah. next time.